Hello, my friends. It's time. Time for another reality check on your relationship with food. But this tutorial really isn't about you or your relationship with food. It's really about why you have the relationship you have with food. It's about your part in the health of the economy. You probably think of your health as an individual matter. But the fact is, you are part of the economy. And as part of the economy, your behavior either benefits or hurts the economy. So the question is, does the health of the economy benefit or hurt your health? And the fact is that you've been programmed by the economy in order to protect, to protect the health of the economy at the expense of your own health. I know you probably think I've lost it, but just keep listening. A light bulb is going to go off before this video is over, and the bulb might just shatter all together. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how and why you have been brainwashed, programmed, and conditioned for the sake of the economy. You are but a tool for the benefit of big business. And all that brainwashing, programming, and conditioning even has you believing that you're doing what's best for you. But instead, it's killing you. This is another tutorial that everybody should watch. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, young or old. This is one you shouldn't miss. It will really open your eyes. What I'll do is talk about the different sectors involved and weave them together as we proceed. So first, there's the economy. By this, I mean the management of resources in a community, especially with a view to its productivity. The economy is all about creating and supporting industries. So it's business, 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 business. And the industries that are at the crux of our discussion today are the food industry, the medical industry, the vitamin, mineral, and supplement industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and the scientific industry. If you live in any developed country, part of the reason that it's developed is because of big business. And the reason businesses become big is because they get consumers to buy their products. In this case, you are the consumer. And these big businesses get you to buy their products by brainwashing you into believing you need their products. That brainwashing leads to programming, which leads to conditioning. And voila, with that, you are a customer for life. And these industries will just get bigger and more successful while you get sicker and more addicted to their products. So in the context of your health, here's how this works. It all starts when you're just a baby. You come into the world and the only thing you can consume is milk. You're like all the other animals on earth. You're totally dependent on your mother's breast milk for survival. And you have an enzyme called lactase to digest the milk. But of course, you're only gonna breastfeed for a few months. Well, the dairy industry says, hey, if we can get people to think they should continue drinking milk after they're weaned from the breast, we can make a bucket load of money. So they market their milk to your parents. They say, children need milk for strong bones and teeth. You need to make your kids drink milk throughout their childhoods once they're weaned from breast milk. Heck, you should just skip the breast milk altogether and feed them our cow's milk from the get-go. And next, they market that same idea to pediatricians. Now you might think pediatricians, they're doctors. They would know it's unnatural to continue drinking milk after weaning. They've been to medical school where they've learned about nutrition. 
And if you think that, you would be entirely wrong. Doctors get no, absolutely no education on nutrition in medical school. Doctors know nothing about nutrition. Doctors are in the business of disease care, not health care. We fix things once they're broken. We have nothing to do with wellness. So when your parents take you to the pediatrician, that brainwashing about needing milk after you've weaned gets reinforced. Then the dairy industry says, let's target the dietitians and nutritionists. We need to get them to sell our milk too. So they fund the educational systems for dietitians and nutritionists. That way, every dietitian and nutritionist learns that milk and other dairy products are a necessary part of a healthy diet. And next, the dairy industry says, now we need to get schools to reinforce the programming about dairy being necessary. So they contract with the schools to supply them with those little square cartons of milk. And when you get, start going to school, you've already had five years of conditioning by your mom to drink your milk, honey. And the school reinforces that for the next 12 years by putting that little carton of milk on your lunch tray every day. Of course, throughout your life, you see TV commercials, magazine ads, ads, and every other form of advertising about milk. And along with that, you are introduced to all sorts of other things that the dairy industry makes with their milk. You know, butter and cream and yogurt and ice cream and cheese and cheese and cheese. And the more you eat of these products, the more you love them. The more you think you can't live without them. Never mind that Mother Nature intended for you to stop ingesting milk. Not only that, she designed your body to stop producing the enzyme to digest the lactose in milk. So when you become an adult, you start noticing that you feel weird when you eat dairy products. You get bloated, you have gas, you pass diarrhea stools, and you even have abdominal cramping. So the dairy industry says, hey, Let's tell all the people who can't digest dairy that they have a medical problem called lactose intolerance and let's make a whole line of our dairy products just for them. So they create a whole line of lactate products just so that you can continue your addiction to dairy and not suffer the consequences, at least not in the short term. So you buy the lactate stuff and you feed your dairy addiction. The fact is that dairy is poison to your body. It causes heart attacks and cancers, but you don't know that. The dairy industry has made sure of that. You've been brainwashed, programmed, and conditioned to do whatever it takes to keep on eating that dairy. So you do what's good for the economy, even though it's bad for you. And then there's the meat industry. This is a big industry. There are cattle farms, slaughterhouses, chicken farms, curing companies, packaging companies, farm feed animal, farm animal feed companies, and on and on and on. And there are all the grocery stores and restaurants and advertising companies to push the meat. And finally, there's you. You're at the bottom of the food chain on this one. And I mean that both literally and figuratively. It all starts when you're a little kid and the family meal centers around the meat. When you ask what's for dinner, your mom answers meatloaf. She doesn't say cruciferous vegetables. <laughs> then you have the meat and potatoes families. Not only do they eat only meat and potatoes, they talk about eating only meat and potatoes and they do so with great pride. It's as if eating meat and potatoes makes you tough or something. And men, oh men, they seem to think that eating meat and potatoes makes them macho. Well, if it's macho to be fat, sick, and have a heart attack or get cancer, then fine. Meat and potatoes will definitely get you there. But I just don't get the gloating over eating only meat and potatoes. And in cultures where meat consists of separate food items, each in their own little piles on your plate, the meat tends to constitute the biggest portion. There are many cultures in which meat constitutes only a small percentage of the overall meal. And usually the meat is mixed in with other food. It's cut up, minced, or minimally present. 
and inevitably those cultures have much healthier diets than the ones that center the entire meal around the meat. The biggest fallacy about meat is that it's the only source of protein. Most people have no idea that you can get higher quality protein from plants than you can from meat. And like the dairy industry's efforts in making you believe you need dairy for calcium, the meat industry makes you believe you need meat for protein. Both of these are absolutely false. But after years and years of hearing all the advertising and hearing everyone you know echo the advertising and never hearing anything to the contrary, you believe that you need dairy for calcium and meat for protein. And you see that all of society is built around these needs. It's almost impossible to go to a restaurant or to someone's house for dinner and avoid meat or dairy. Everybody eats them. Most people never even stop to think about how illogical it is. And even if you did decide not to buy into that trickery, you'd find it difficult to eat out or to eat with your friends. And face it, after all that brainwashing, you're actually kind of addicted to meat and dairy. You love them. Even when you learn that they're killing you, you still want them. Isn't that the same problem with cigarettes or alcohol or marijuana or any other substance of abuse? So you don't really want to break your meat and dairy habit. What you really want is to have your meat and eat it too. In other words, you want to be able to eat your beloved meat and dairy but not suffer the consequences. No problem. That's why we have a health care system. Well, I say health care, but it's really a disease care system. And that's all part of big industry too. They call it a health care system as if it's there to keep you healthy. It's not. Medical education, all four years of medical school, teach doctors how to fix what's broken. That's what we do. We don't get a minute of nutrition. We don't get a minute of exercise physiology. We learn nothing about the benefits of avoiding disease in the first place. If that's what you thought your doctor could do for you, then you've got the wrong profession. Doctors are repairmen. Now, you don't know that I'm an MD. I'm just going to tell you the truth about everything, even if it's not enlightening and positive about my own profession, but doctors are repairmen. Your doctor knows how to give you medication and perform surgery to fix you once you've made yourself sick. They don't know how to keep you well. Now that doesn't make doctors bad. If you're sick, you need a doctor. It's a whole industry designed specifically for the purpose of dealing with disease. And as long as you do what it takes to get diseases, the medical industry will be big business. The whole disease care system is designed to fix you once you're screwed up. And since you don't want to be held accountable for your addiction to things that are bad for you, the disease care system tells you that it's a health care system. And you interpret that to mean that it can keep you healthy. Well, guess what? No one can keep you healthy but you. And the problem with that is that no one is teaching you how to stay healthy. All you get is misinformation. If you're not sick or you want to stay well, then you need someone in the wellness industry. That means a fitness trainer, a dietitian, a nutritionist. The problem is their education is funded by the meat and dairy industries. So much of what they tell you is inaccurate, but they don't know it's inaccurate. So you keep eating your meat and dairy. Then the wellness industry comes up with all sorts of diets. There's an all protein diet, a no carb diet, a low calorie diet, a starvation diet, a point diet, a pre-prepared food diet. All you have to do is stay on a diet for a couple of weeks and you can reverse all the damage you've done for the last couple of decades. Oh, and then there's the cleanse. That's where you eat all the crap you normally eat and then clean out your system to make up for it. It's like washing away your sins. It implies that no damage has been done. You 
know it doesn't work that way, right? If you don't put junk that makes you sick and fat into your body in the first place, you don't need to try to reverse it all with a diet or a cleanse. And there is nothing healthy about any fad diet or any cleanse. While they're part of the so-called wellness industry, there's nothing about either of them that represents wellness. Then, because of all the junk in food and all the dieting and cleansing you do to compensate for eating that food, the wellness industry tells you that to take vitamins and minerals and supplements out of a bottle. They should be telling you that you can avoid all your weight and medical problems if you just eat a 100% plant-based diet. But instead, they tell you to eat everything in moderation, practice dieting, and take vitamins and minerals. All this makes the wellness industry a multi-billion dollar a year industry. And everything they tell you to do is what will keep them in business. Oh, and then the wellness industry tries to sell you on a 14-minute workout or a single exercise machine that will erase all your sins from your junky diet. Of course, they make all these devices sound like magic. You can continue eating your meat, dairy, and junk food, and the machine will make up for it. The wellness industry has you hooked, too. And as a result of listening to all the advertisements that say meat and dairy is fine, and all your friends who say it's fine, and your parents who say it's fine, and your doctors who say it's fine, and your nutritionist, dietitian, and fitness trainer who say it's fine, you keep eating it. And what happens? You develop diseases. So when you get diabetes, or have a heart attack, or get one of the hundreds of types of cancers that could have all been prevented by not eating meat and dairy and junk food in the first place, you go to your doctor. And one of the biggest tools your doctor has for dealing with your disease is medications. And that brings us to the pharmaceutical industry as the next player in this big picture. Without all these diseases, there wouldn't be much of a pharmaceutical industry. But as long as you stay addicted to your meat, dairy, and junk food, and think that you can magically erase your lifestyle sins with diets, cleanses, magic exercise machines, and bottle supplements, there will always be plenty of diseases to go around. And the pharmaceutical industry will have to develop drugs for all those diseases. And you'd rather pop a pill than give up your meat, dairy, or exercise regularly anyway, right? So you're happy that you don't have to change your behavior. Face it, it's hard to break an addiction. So as long as you need doctors to fix your diseases and the disease care industry, and as long as doctors need medications to compensate for the fact that you're addicted to your bad habits, and as long as the pharmaceutical companies have to keep making drugs to reverse what your bad habits have done to your body, we'll also need the scientific industry to study the effects of those drugs. So there's a whole sector of the scientific industry devoted to studying protein and fat and all the things that happen when you put animal products into your body, laze around without exercise, try fad diets, etc. You don't hear about most of the scientific research that proves that you're destroying yourself. It's hushed. Because hey, if you learned the truth, the economy would crumble. My God, if they tell you that all you have to do is eat a 100% plant-based diet to keep your body fit in the first place, it would be a disaster for big business. You wouldn't need them anymore. Can you imagine if you just stopped eating everything with a face or a mother, you'd stop buying meat and dairy products. And you'd stop patronizing all the restaurants that thrive on your meat and dairy addiction. And you'd never gain weight. That means you wouldn't need the wellness industry with all of their diets, cleanses, and exercise machines. Nor would you need to buy your vitamins and minerals in bottles. And you wouldn't get diseases that drive you to the disease care industry where doctors try to fix you. And you wouldn't need the drugs that the pharmaceutical industries make. And the scientists for protein and pharmaceuticals wouldn't have anything to study. Oh my! None of these big industries would be big industries. And that would hurt the economy. So instead of hurting the economy, the collective decision has been made to let you go on hurting yourself. So I ask you, 
Are you going to buy into it? Are you going to try to justify why you should stay loyal to your addictions and unhealthy lifestyle? Are you going to continue to support the economy more than you support your own health? The decisions are all yours, but just be honest with yourself. Don't you think I've hit a nerve? Whenever I have discussions like this with people, they know that what I'm saying is true, but they don't want it to be true. They love their meat, dairy, junk food, laziness, and magical remedies. Is that the case for you? The bottom line is that you've never had the health education you need to know the truth. The truth makes sense. Whether or not you're going to act on the truth is your prerogative. But everything is connected. The economy is a very powerful force. It really doesn't care about you. You have to care about you. And I'm here to help you do just that. Alrighty, I'm going to leave now before you start throwing tomatoes at the screen. <laughs> Eat those tomatoes instead of throwing them at me. <laughs> I hope I haven't upset you too much. I'll see you in a week. And in the meantime, you have to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to my channel, and go to my website, menopausetaylor.me. See all the goodies I have for you. They're all just educational articles that I've written that you can read or print out. You can buy my book. You can buy the video of the seminar. You can buy the DVD called Menopause 101 for Men. You can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. You can sign up for my seminar and just about anything. So, hope to see you soon. I'll see you in a week here on YouTube. Take care. Bye.